As good an example as any of this informing and redeeming power in our author's genius might be taken from the comic scenes in both parts of Henry IV. Nothing can go much lower in intellect or morals than many of the characters. Here are fools and knaves in abundance of the meanest order and stripped stark naked. But genius, like charity, covers a multitude of sins. We pity as much as we despise them. In spite of our disgust, we like them because they like themselves, and because we are made to sympathise with them. And the ligament, fine as it is, which links them to humanity, is never broken. Who would quarrel with wart, or feeble, or mouldy, or bullcalf, or even with pistol, nim, or bardolph? None but a hypocrite. The severe censures of the morals of imaginary characters can generally find a hole for their own vices to creep out at, and yet do not perceive how it is that the imperfect and even deformed characters in Shakespeare's plays, as done to the life, by forming a part of our personal consciousness, claim our personal forgiveness, and suspend or evade our moral judgment by bribing our self-love to side with them. Not to do so is not morality, but affectation, stupidity, or ill-nature. I have more sympathy with one of Shakespeare's pick purses, Gad's Hill or Pito, than I can possibly have with any member of the Society for the Suppression of Vice, and would by no means assist to deliver the one into the hands of the other. Those who cannot be persuaded to draw a veil over the foibles of ideal characters may be suspected of wearing a mask over their own. Again, in point of understanding and attainments, Shallow sinks low enough, and yet his cousin Silence is a foil to him. He is the shadow of a shade, glimmers on the very verge of downright imbecility, and totters on the brink of nothing. He has been merry twice and once there now, and is hardly persuaded to break his silence in a song. Shallow has heard the chimes at midnight, and roared out glees and catches at taverns and inns of court when he was young. So, at least, he tells his cousin silence, and Falstaff encourages the loftiness of his pretensions. Shallow would be thought a great man among his dependents and followers. Silence is nobody, not even in his own opinion. Yet he sits in the orchard, and eats his caraways and pippins among the rest. Shakespeare takes up the meanest subjects with the same tenderness that we do an insect's wing, and would not kill a fly. <laughs>